Welcome to Showing Up Solo with Hannah and Nicole, your guides to navigating online marketing for your business. Hello, and welcome to our second episode of the month. Uh, today, Nicole and I are joined by the amazing Courtney Miller. I uh, know Courtney. She's been a longtime client of mine, and I've also been a client of hers. She uh, is my or was my social media coach and still someone I'm always referring to for her expertise. So we'd like to welcome Courtney Miller today. And Courtney, why don't you tell everyone a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much, ladies, for having me today. This is I'm so excited and I'm so um, inspired to talk to to your listeners and to talk all things social today. As Hannah mentioned, my name is Courtney Miller. I am a social media and kind of content coach as well. My company is Miller Digital and I help service-based providers and creatives learn how to confidently manage their own social media. So my main kind of bread and butter, so to speak, is coaching one-on-one, -on -one, teaching entrepreneurs how to DIY, how to confidently manage their own social because a lot of them aren't necessarily in the capacity to pay somebody to do it, or they want to be able to actually learn how to do it themselves and learn how to grow their brand's online presence. So that is a little bit about me. I've been in business now for about, oh gosh, going on three years, uh, two years full-time. And it's been a wild ride to say the least, which I'm sure both of you can relate to as well. Um, especially as entrepreneurs and yeah, I'm so excited to be here today and chat with you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Um, I have to say for myself, I have watched many of your live videos and interviews with not only Hannah, but, yeah. um, just like content that you're sharing with your own audience. And it's, it's, so um, it's a breath of fresh air to watch because it's not you you relay this information in a way that's not complicated and you simplify it and make it so easy for people to, you know, use it. So um, I, I started following you before I even knew that you and Hannah were working together. So <laughs> Oh my gosh, I, I cyber stalked you, Courtney, for so long. Um, <laughs> you, were always, <laughs> you, you were always um, the person I was like, okay, this is the level I need to get to. I learned so much from the free content you put out there on yeah. Instagram. And um, yeah, I remember when you first reached out, I was like, it was like this like validation that you wanted my services. Cause I was like, if yeah. someone like Courtney wants my services, I'm finally a real person, re the real deal. That's so. so, that's so interesting. Yeah. We have talked about that and um, thank you both for your kind words. That's so um, that's it. That's encouraging to hear for uh, on a personal aspect, because that's exactly what my goal and what my aim is, is to mm -hmm. make social media simple because I think it can get so complicated and I'm sure both of you or any other, anyone else who's listening, who's in that social media field, we can get so in our heads about it too, because we're in it every single day that I just, I really want to make sure that I can break it down and make it easy for people to understand. And yeah, thank you both. And so same thing with you too, Hannah, it was funny. I know we've talked about this before too, but once I know we both kind of started our businesses around the same time too. So it was so interesting to watch both of us grow and to be able to connect and both work with each other. It's been, it's been awesome. I love supporting other entrepreneurs, especially within, you know, the same space. Well, and that's, what's really wonderful is like that we work in the same space and yet there's no competition there. It's all about supporting each other. And, um, that's, that's what I love. Um, just about actually, like, I think the, um, the online business owner community in general, but also um, Nicole as well. Like sh you have your own business too, and we're all working together to help each other succeed and help each other thrive. And I think that's one of the really wonderful things you can find through this online marketing world. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, community over competition and yeah. there is more than enough um, business owners, there's more than enough, uh, clients to go around. Not everyone can do it all. So the better that we can put our heads together and, 
you know, refer each other and make sure that we're working with the right type of clients that we want to work with. I just absolutely love working with online business owners in general. And the more that we can bring each other up, especially I think as women, um, you know, the more of a driving force we're going to be. I couldn't agree with you more, Courtney. I I was thinking the same thing as you were saying that I feel like we all, we all have different strengths. And instead of looking at each other as competition, it's like looking at each other, like how can we use each other to help not only ourselves, but one another and grow and get better. So yeah, um, I couldn't agree with you more on that. So Courtney, for our listeners and for our viewers who are maybe a little hesitant to get into the social media marketing world. I think there's a lot of business owners, um, especially our age and above, who feel like they should be on social media, mm-hmm. but they they didn't grow up <laughs> with, with all these platforms. They didn't grow up with all these platforms at their fingertips. They're not super comfortable with it, let alone like what to put out there. So could you maybe just for them talk about why you think social media um, is an important part of your marketing plan and, and, and um, whether you think it's as hard as it maybe seems it can be. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. That second one, uh, which I'll get to, but basically why, why should we be on social media in the first place? So it doesn't really matter if you're a brand new business owner, if you're just starting out, or if you're somebody who's maybe been in the game for a while and you're just thinking about, you know, finally adding a social presence, it's kind of without saying now that you need to be on social media in order to not only connect with your customers, but to grow your brand organically and to make sure that you are also uh, representing your brand the way that you truly want it to be. That doesn't matter whether or not you sell, you know, if if you have a service business, if you sell products, if you do e-commerce, if you're a retail, like a brick and mortar, everybody needs to be on social But the key piece is, which I know a lot of business owners get overwhelmed with, is they go, oh my God, there's so many platforms out there. I don't even know where to start. How do I manage all of these? What do I do? And the most important piece that I always tell business owners, especially new ones starting out, is focus on the platforms that A, you know your audience is actually using first. And B, the ones that you actually enjoy, or if you have somebody who is managing your own social for you, that's like a team member, make sure it's something that you enjoy and that you can actively participate in as well. That doesn't, you know, you don't have to be on every single platform out there, just exactly where your audience is. Once you feel comfortable and once you've started to, you know, master a little bit that one particular platform, then you can start to add in another one and so on and so forth. But at that point, then your resources, you know, do become a little bit more stretched. So you do need perhaps some more help or assistance to do that. Um, And I completely understand how that can be overwhelming for any business owner, even like personally, I'm sure you guys can relate to anytime there, there is like a new platform that comes out. It's like, Oh my gosh, what now? Like, do I have to, do I have to be on this? Like, do I need to get into it? Like it's just, and as somebody, and you're trying to understand it yourself and you're trying to teach people how to use it, it can believe me. It's not just the average everyday business owner that feels that way. We do too as marketers. Mm It's really reassuring that you said that, uh, you know, about picking the platform that your ideal client is on, and then really trying to establish yourself on that platform. And then once you feel more comfortable, you can move on to another one that you like, or that you want to try exploring. I think I know for myself, at first, I was like, how am I going to sign up on all these platforms and keep up with everything? And like the thought of it just felt so overwhelming. So it's nice to hear you say, you know, this is where, this is a great jumping off part. Yeah. And I can, I mean, just even thinking back like 10 years ago compared to where we are now, if you were starting it as a business owner and thinking too, like what you said earlier, Hannah, about, you know, if you didn't grow up with social media, like you weren't entrenched with it you didn't know like I was there from the birth of Facebook like I had a Facebook account when 
like regular the the regular public wasn't allowed to have it yet like when you were just at schools right when you had to have that university email yeah. address I know I got in there when it was still this new weird thing that people were yes. just trying to use exactly <laughs> so if you haven't grown up with that it's absolutely overwhelming and it's it's so interesting because I'll, I've worked with quite a few clients now who are kind of in that um some of them are in that baby boomer era who have no clue what they need to be doing, but they know they need to be on it. And I think Mm -hmm. that's the first piece is people are realizing, okay, I know I need to be on it. I know my audience is here. They've seen the power that social media has. So how do I make it to that next step? And what do I do? Yeah. Which is, how do you harness? Which is a great question. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Which is, uh, I think a great question, actually, like, where do you start if you, if, I mean, that obviously pick a platform where you think you're a client are, but let's say we've picked a platform. Let's use um, Instagram. I know it's super, super popular. Yeah. Um, so what do you do when you've picked a platform? How do you, how do you use it to market your business? Okay. Great question. So the first piece is yes, we've identified, okay, let's say our platform is Instagram. We know our audience is on there. And by the way, pretty much I can tell any business owner, your audience is on Instagram. So great place to start. Um, your first piece is determining, I think, what do you want to be talking to your audience about? And that basically comes down to a term that we call your content pillars or your content buckets. So these are your kind of two to four core topics that you are always talking about on your social media, something that relates either to your industry itself, to either the services or the products that you sell, how you can be a little more personal on social media, have some humor with it and how you can directly relate to your audience, because you don't always, I think a lot of people traditionally, when they think about, you know, marketing or advertising, they're thinking, I always need to be promoting myself. I always need to be selling myself or my products. Whereas social media is more of a community and engagement aspect. So you need to focus more, I think, on your audience themselves and how you can relate to them, what needs they have, what issues, what pain points they're currently facing. And then you can sprinkle in your services or your products or your personal things. It's more about building that community. So ask yourself, what do I want my content pillars or my content buckets to be? Once you've determined those, it's super easy to just even do something like a Google search based on those kind of keywords, for example, and see what is popping up in Google search results. That'll tell you like what your audience is actually looking for and searching for and information on. doesn't matter like if it's a product you sell, if it's a service, people are asking for those things. Another great um, way that's for one way to get content ideas. Another fantastic way is through Pinterest as well because all that information is out there too, what people are searching for. So have a look at those two platforms, start to write down some content ideas and also pull from what you have in your head for content ideas and write that down as well, because we are the greatest wealth of information, you know, as the, as the owner, as the expertise. Um, And the second piece to that then is once you have your content ideas is to just start posting. A lot of people get, hung up in the sense of, oh my gosh, I need to make sure like my bio is perfectly curated first. And, you know, I need to make sure my website's up, but my website's not up yet, or it's not finished. So I can't really post yet. Doesn't matter. Just start posting because the faster that you can start to connect, the faster that you can start to engage with people, it doesn't really matter if your website isn't perfect or if it's not up yet, if your bio isn't like perfectly crafted, as long as you can make those one-on-one connections with people, those sales can naturally happen within the DMs, within the comment sections. Those can start to organically happen before your website's even ready. So I think that's a lot of things that business owners get hung up on is, oh my gosh, everything needs to be perfect first before I can launch my social. And I am 100% guilty of this. I did this myself thinking I need to have my website up and ready first before I can launch any of my social platforms. And I wish I didn't do that because that delayed me maybe about a month and a half. And I wish I just started getting out there and and communicating with my community more. So that is the third, the third piece. Yes. The third piece (laughs) to starting your social. Um, 
And the fourth piece is really to educate yourself, try and find out, you know, what is it that your audience is wanting to learn from you or what are they, what do they need from you? What are their pain points? What are their fears? What are their overall goals that they want to achieve? Again, doesn't matter whether you have a service or a retail business, every single customer is going to have those things. So really try and do some in-depth information about your ideal audience or about your ideal customer. And that'll really help you start to map out your content ideas too, as you start to go on. Cause I know a lot of business owners get stuck on what do I post, you know, on a daily basis and you can start to build out some content ideas based on, you know, what your audience is actually telling you too. That could even be in the comments as well. And the fifth, fourth, fifth piece, <laughs> I'm losing track of my numbers. The fifth piece is to be social on social. So you need to engage. You need to be talking with your community. I know everyone says this phrase, but you don't post and ghost. So don't think that just posting on social media is going to get you far with your online presence. You absolutely need to be actually communicating, talking, engaging with your ideal customers. So that could be, you know, responding to any comments that they leave on your posts, going and commenting on other people's posts, people that you follow, people that you don't follow, people in your community, your competitors, so to speak, quote competitors, and just make sure that you are out there because the more that people see that you're also out there on social media, the more they're going to start to remember your face, your name, and lead back to your profile to follow you, which hopefully, you know, is ultimately the, the goal of social, which then you can have that start to organically grow that follower base too. So that's kind of my five, five quick, simple steps to get started. There's, there can be a lot more and I could go on a tangent, forever, <laughs> but I don't want to over, over hours, and hours, hours, hours and hours and hours about this. <laughs> it's kind of the reason that Nicole and I started this series because otherwise we could have just put on like a 10 or 15 hour, um, live or something. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I guess I, I could absolutely do that. Yeah. So now that you've listed off like those five really key areas for someone to really jump off with their start with their social media, what would be the biggest takeaway you think they need to know when they're creating their marketing plan? Oh, that is a great question. I think the biggest piece is you need to have goals. You need to create some strategic goals for your business and for your marketing. I know a lot of people can just dive into social and just think that, okay, I'm just going to post every day, see what happens. And that can work initially in the beginning, if you really just want to start to grow your presence, but you need some strategic goals in place in order to know, okay, how are we going to get to X, Y, Z or If you want to actually start converting your followers into sales, how are we going to do that? You need to kind of tangibly set those tangible goals. Um, And then the second piece to that too is, okay, so hang on. I just lost it. It was in my head. Now I, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to jump in there. It'll come back back to me. I love what you're saying about, um, about the clear goals. I mean, Nicole and I are always, always, always on about the goals. Yeah. Um, but it's like true. Like a lot of people on now think I need to grow my following. I need to grow my audience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it's easy to grow an audience. You need to be more specific. Like maybe you don't have anything to sell right now. Maybe you want to grow your audience so that they're ready for you to start selling something to them. Yes. Then you want to grow an audience filled with your ideal clients. That's different to just growing an audience. You want to grow an audience filled with ideal clients. Or maybe you want more sales and you think growing your audience is the answer when actually the answer is converting your current audience into clients and customers. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. That is such a huge, huge piece. And I think it's interesting too, like as you start to also shift as a business owner, you start to, I think, especially if you're like an online entrepreneur, um, your audience does start to shift and you start to realize who your ideal 
client is. And it can get very, very specific. And when you start to produce that content that attracts more of that specific ideal client, that's really all that matters at the end of the day is you talking to your ideal client. You don't need to be talking to appease everybody. You just need to be focusing on your ideal client in your content. And that does take time um, as a business owner. It takes, sometimes it takes practice. It takes some understanding to learn, okay, who is it that I really want to work with? Who do I enjoy working with? What kind of point are they at in their business? And really learning how to hone in and speak to them in your, in your captions, in your copy, in your reels, in your lives, that can take some time. So it's absolutely, I would say more, um, kind of a little more of an advanced strategy down the road as people start to learn, as people start to understand how social actually works. Um, that that's so important. And I'm really glad that you, that you touched on that, Hannah. Well, it's actually really nice to hear you say that it's something that you figure out along the road. It's not something that you need to know right away. And I think that's um, a, a big weight on people's shoulders. They feel like they need to know everything right away and they need to get it right. And it's either right or wrong. And so understanding that this is something that you learn and it can change and it will evolve and you will change and they will change is totally fine. Absolutely. And I think that's honestly the biggest sign of growth is when you see an entrepreneur start to shift their audience, start to, you know, play a little bit more with the type of offerings that they have or the services they have. You can start to see because of their growth, they're also now trying to help those that are also kind of growing at the same rate as them. It's really interesting to watch. I think, um, particularly with business coaches, it's really interesting to watch. And for me, like I know when I first started out, I was originally thinking I'm going to talk to anyone and everyone who wants help with their social media, with their digital marketing. And then it became a little bit more, more, okay, no, I want to help beginners. And then it became, okay, no, now I want to help specifically service providers and creatives. And now it's women. And now it's women who own their own businesses and service providers. And it's, it's now in a place where I know exactly who I'm serving versus before where I'm just going to put it out there to the world, which <laughs> I did I mean, totally fine to begin with. Absolutely. It's totally fine. But you will, you will learn, um, as you go that you need to niche down and you need to, uh, really focus on who it is that you want to work with, because otherwise you're going to very quickly learn there are clients that, uh, that you don't enjoy working with and ones that you do. I, and Hannah, I know can attest to this. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, especially as well, when you, you're going to come across those dream clients, those ones where working for them doesn't feel like work. You're just like, I love doing this. Like I could do this all day and every day. Um, and the more of your energy you're devoting to people who aren't those dream clients, the less energy you have for the people who are. Mm -hmm. So I think as you start to go along and you start to attract these people who really line up with what you want, then um, like you'll start to focus that message in too. I like, I'm always talking about being authentic and showing up as yourself. And I think that is really, really important too, because you're going to attract the people who are going to work well with you because they're going to get that energy from you. Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's how you and I connected and how Nicole, like we, we are, we attracted each other because we we're compatible, you know, Be, and yeah, we can yeah. tell that because we show up very authentically in all of our marketing. Yeah. And that's, I mean, you nailed it on the head with that. And I think it's so interesting too. I, I found personally, and I know a few other business owners I've talked to your dream client at the end of the day, sometimes quite often ends up being, you know, a version of yourself. And I find for me, the types of clients that I work with, they all become my friends. Like they, I keep in touch with them, like on a personal level, not just professional. And it's really, it's a lot of fun because it's so true. Like what you said, Hannah, when you start to work with somebody that is that dream client, it doesn't seem like work. It's just you having a conversation with them and teaching them and, you know, working for them, it's, it becomes a lot of fun. And that's especially where your energy is really going to start to shine because it's enjoyable for you. And nobody wants to, you know, work in their business and, and have that negativity working with clients that, you know, just aren't suited for you. 
because in the end it, it's not really worth that that time or energy, even if, you know, the paycheck's nice, it's not worth it at the end of the day to protect your own, your own energy, your own, um, I think burnout can happen a lot faster that way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would completely agree, especially because your energy is so valuable to you. And if you're using so much on someone who's just not bringing that value back to you, and um, you're losing out on so much potential of connecting with more people that you like your other dream clients. Yes. And I know for Hannah and I, the, the dream clients that we've worked with typically bring more dream clients that like their dream clients are essentially like our dream clients. So you end up building this network of people that you love working with, that you enjoy working for. Um, it doesn't feel like work. So Absolutely. when you make the, when you have that kind of, when you put that energy out in the world and you make those connections with other dream clients, you tend to find they're coming to you more are. Yeah, that's a great point, Nicole. And also, I mean, it, it just expands your network even further. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those referrals that start to come in too, it's just, it's a wonderful, when you get to that place, it's such a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, Courtney, uh, pleasure as always to have you, um, to, to just get on a call with you and chat to you. Um, I think you've given us, so, given us and our listeners so much to think about what, if you, um, what would be like your final, final thoughts or final takeaway that if someone's listening to this right now, what would you, what message or lesson would you like them to leave with? To just get started. I know social media can be overwhelming. I know it can seem confusing at times, but just get started. Just be yourself, be authentic and really know who your audience is. Because at the end of the day, when you're talking to your audience, when you're being authentic, that is when you are going to start to really see a shift in your social media. So just get started and just run and have fun with it. Honestly, at the end of the day, social media is meant to be fun. So have fun with it. Love that. Yeah. Well, thank you. And um, we also want to let our listeners know what kind of amazing things you offer. Um, so yeah, please share. We'd love to hear more about it. Yeah. Absolutely. How can someone work with you if they want to, yeah. um, if they fall in love with you after this episode, just like we, <laughs> we fell in love with your content. Oh gosh, you guys. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, first of all, thank you both so much for having me. It's so much fun. And, and like we said, it's just, it's just a fun conversation uh, to have too. Uh, if anyone wants to work with me, my signature program is called Instagram Superstar. It is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I teach service providers, uh, content creators, creatives, how to confidently manage their Instagram. It is a six week program where we have monthly lessons and we talk about specific Instagram strategies for their business. And I have video modules that they watch prior to each lesson. We focus on things, basically how to get organized and how to really confidently manage your Instagram is the first piece of it. But we also talk about all the nitty gritty specifics like crafting your bio, like coming up with content ideas, how to use hashtags, how to create reels, how to go live, how to have an engagement strategy. So it is a lot of fun and it's designed for the overwhelmed entrepreneur who wants to DIY, who enjoys social media. And honestly, those are the best people that end up getting the best results because they are hundred percent committed to it. And it is a lot of fun. It's one of, um, I think one of the best services that I've come up with in my, in my, in my three years, as I've said, I've expanded and grown. And I also just offer one-on-one -on -one coaching consultations to service providers who want to, you know, learn one specific thing or want to really tackle one issue. And you can get in touch with me on Instagram at Courtney.MillerDigital, or you can check out my website, MillerDigital.ca. As someone who has worked with you on a one-to-one -one, six week capacity. Yes. Um, I, I cannot say enough good things about it. I came to you um, already knowing a lot about social media, already offering the services, but just wanting to broaden my skill set and um, increase my confidence. And I just, I walked away with so much information 
Um, I think I've said it before, but like after we had one coaching call, I went and made like 400 pins for my Pinterest account. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> That's amazing. I was so impressed with you. I was so inspired from our conversation though. That's the thing. Like I just had a coaching call with Courtney. And then like by the next time I saw her, I was like, yeah, I just did like 400 pins and another 200 on the to-do list. And <laughs> like, Which was like 600 or it was 600. It was six months worth of pins. Six months of content. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, which is, yeah, that's just, that's the energy that you get from working with you. Oh, thank you. And Hannah was a star student too. So mm-hmm. honestly, if you want to see the results that she got, you can, you can see all that on my website too, her, her testimonials and, uh, results. And if you are a VA like Hannah, then this is 100% the program for you. Um, and then also just before we let everyone go, we're just really excited that we're, um, if you are a showing up solo member, we're going to have Courtney come and visit our members and give some special exclusive training. So, uh, if you're not a member yet, this is a great excuse to sign up, um, so that you can get access to that incredible exclusive training with her. Yeah, we're going to have so much fun. I'm so excited. Us too. Well, thanks, Courtney, for joining us today. We cannot wait um, to meet with you again and and share share you with our members. So um, thanks again for uh, joining us today. And we will talk to you soon. Till next time. Till next time. Want more from Hannah and Nicole? Make sure to sign up for the Showing Up Solo Membership, a monthly membership with guest experts, free resources, and a members-only invite to our live content batching sessions. A wonderful opportunity to meet new people and get advice from Hannah and Nicole live in person. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. See you next time.